Radio 4. It's half past eight. Saturday Night Theatre. We present Alice of Kilkenny by Ian Roger with Patricia Leventon as Alice Kittler. The action of the play takes place in Kilkenny, Ireland, in 1324. Alice of Kilkenny. Three hundred and eighty-one. This is crazy. With bad debts like this, we can only make worse enemies. William! No, it's eighty-two. Three hundred and eighty-two. Now, at 15%. Hey, William. Look, can you wait? Can't you see I'm busy? Have you seen me back? No, she went out. Both of them went out. Oh, it's fine for them. I might have known it would end up like this. The two of them garden off and me left here with nothing to do. Sure to God, there's plenty to do if you've a mind to do it. I was not brought up to, to, to sweep floors and wash dishes. My father never dreamt I'd inhabit the house of a money lender. Oh, no, Vasily, of course not. You were schooled to be the grand lady. Oh, God. I wish I were back in the decent county of Meath, where both the grass and the men are gentle. Your mother was glad enough to be taken in. Oh, William. Look, have, have you ever heard of anything going on in this town of Kilkenny from one year's end to the other? Well... I suppose we could make a go of it and have a bit of sport, huh? huh. I'd rather find some creature that wasn't entirely covered in ink all day. Yeah. Somebody who didn't spend all his days crouching over other people's money. Who do you think you're living on, girl? You and the whole town, for that matter. If my father hadn't set this business up, they'd all be in a poor way. And my father, God rest his soul, would have said the whole business was beyond the law. Look, do you mind? I have to add up me little sums. Sixty-five. Oh. They say it's bad to be a widow, but it's worse to be a widow's daughter. They seem to think I'm some kind of threat. A brigand on the road who's going to tear away their precious sons. Look, there's no need to worry. And as for your mother, my mother will find her a nice enough man. Oh, yeah. She's the expert, isn't she? Four husbands in a row. Oh, now, wait now. When my father died, she couldn't run this on her own. There had to be a man. It's tough enough lending money without being a woman as well. It's no good moping, Basilia. You've got to go out there and take what you want of this world. It doesn't last any of us too long. How did they die, William? First there was Adam Leblanc, and then there was Richard Duval. My father died of the plague, I think. The others just caught a cold or something. <laughs> but how Richard was always wheezing. Mm. That's not what they say. No, it's not what they say. Look, will you leave me be? I have to get on. Well, how long will you be? Ah, please, look, Noel of Limerick here owes us a mint, and he's not paid his interest. But is it true? What, about Noel of Limerick? No. Is it true that you cast a spell on them? Now, see here, Basilia, my mother would cast a spell on anything that made money, but she wouldn't easy turn to murder. It's not profitable. So the next time some idle gossip gets your ear, you tell them straight. There's nothing Alice Kittler needs to know about casting spells. Now, would you get your knitting out, cook the dinner, or do something, but leave me alone? William! Basilia! Ah, here they are. Oh, what's the matter, child? I choked her off. She won't give me any peace. Ah, you're a grand lad, William. You just get on with it. Now, look at this, Basilia. Your mother has this lovely piece of cloth which is all the way from France. Look, Bazzy, look. <gasps> Oh, jeez. Oh, it's lovely, Mother. But where am I going to find a place to wear it? Ah, well, now, just for once I'm ahead of you. For in the castle there's to be a grand occasion. There's the new bishop coming all the way from England, and our Lord Hugh Dispenser himself has personally invited the two of us. Oh, will there be many there? The best of all in the Pale of Kilkenny, and more besides. Are we invited too? Of course. I told Lord Hugh that I don't think John will go. He's really not up to it, poor soul. Where is he? Upstairs, lying down, I think. He was poking around here with all this, but I told him not to bother. He's no head for figures, but he likes to make a mystery of it. Ah, there's nothing like making a mystery of something when you don't understand it. Ah, like the priests, eh? Oh, God, Alice, you mustn't. Oh, well, jeez. 
They get in my hair sometimes. I'd get better advice from a nun any day of the week. Ah, you're right there. At least they know what it's like to be a woman. Or should I say, to give them the benefit of the doubt, they know what it's like to be Basilio. Oh, what, <laughs> Mother? What? Ah, never mind. And for God's sake, stop whirling that cloth around. Go up there and get yourself a needle and a thread and some scissors and make a dress of it. Oh, all right, Mother. Hey, look, William. What do you think? Oh, it's a great piece of cloth. The bishop will love it. Oh, <laughs> you! <laughs> oh, it's a great thing to have a son who likes his work. Hey, uh, William. What is it now? They tell me this new bishop's going to stir up all that stuff about usury being illegal. Ah, oh, they're just trying to scare you. They put us out of business and they'd be in real trouble. Oh, it's such hypocrisy. They live on us 11 months of the year and then they have the gall to tell us we shouldn't do it. <laughs> There's none of them too proud to borrow money. Oh, you best go and see who it is, son. And if they want to borrow anything, tell them we're shot. All right, mother. You know what beats me, Petta? They come at all hours. Now, in my father's day, they came on his terms. Oh, they didn't mess about with Kittler. Hello, Father Glynn. It's Father Glynn. Oh, Jesus, Mary, what does he want? Oh, uh, hello, Father. Oh, what a surprise. Come in. Thank you. Oh, and make yourself at home. Um, I don't think you've met my friend... Petronilla de me. No, I have not had that pleasure. Not, I may say, in the six months in which you have been here. Oh, yes, Father. Uh, we, we have been very busy, you know, uh, settling in and so on. Yes. From all that I hear, this is what might be called a busy place. I see that your son is already back at his books. Uh, take a seat, Father. I'll get you something to eat and drink. Uh, thank you. I will sit, but I will not eat or drink. Oh? Well... What do you want, then? I've never known you come without asking something. I have come to give rather than to take. Where is John Lipper? My husband is upstairs. Shall I get him? Uh, no, 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 no. There's no particular need. Oh, but I wouldn't want you thinking, like some of my so-called friends, that he's lying up there loaded with poison and a pillow stuck in his mouth. Oh, now, please. No, Father. We all know what they say. There's all of them talking away behind our backs about how my friend here has dandered the blood of three men with their potions and her incantations and God knows what. And if you want to know the truth of it, there isn't a man with muscle enough in the whole of Kilkenny to take her on. She's right there, Father. You keep out of it. Now, will I get you a drink? I have come here to give you a warning. Look, I'll be at Mass on Sunday, I promise you. I'm afraid it's more than that. Before I say any more, I want you both to understand that you have not heard a word of it from me. Oh, what are you talking about? This is very difficult. Tell me, do you have a black dog? A black dog? Oh, I never had a dog in my life, Father. They're dirty things, always sniffing about between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Father, sorry. But uh, what's a black dog to do with it? Have you ever inadvertently or deliberately uttered a word against the faith? Oh, now wait. You know me. I speak my mind. And there's many would agree if they had the guts. There's too much meddling in things which are no concern of the church. Before there was a Norman judge in sight, the people of Ireland had their own laws and their church did not concern itself with these matters. It was entirely up to the chieftains to make the laws. <sighs> But nowadays, the bishops want to run it all. And worse than that, they want to be owners of property and controllers of commerce. And I say plenty against that. Oh, but that is not to say a word against the faith. I'm afraid it's more than that. The newly appointed bishop has the intentions of charging you and your associates with witchcraft. Witchcraft? Oh, he's mad. How can I be a witch? I deal in money, not in casting spells. I run a business. He can see for himself. He can read those accounts. It's all there, all written down for anyone to see. Well, she's right, Father. The only magic in that is for them that can't read and them that can't count. He has evidence and he has witnesses. But this is absurd. I haven't lived here all that long, but I've known Alice off and on for 18... 
19 years. And I've seen the good she's done. Oh, they don't talk about any of that. He has a list of charges made out, item by item. Take this dog now. I told you, I haven't got a dog. This black dog is your familiar. He is your constant shadow. But I hate the things. Have you ever seen the hair of a one in here? Can you even smell it? On St. Bridget's Day last, it is said that you sacrificed two black cockerels. Oh, open your eyes, Father. They do that all over Ireland. You must surely know that what they do in the rest of Ireland is not for you. We are not Irish. Well, I was born and bred here and my father before me. You can't live in a place, Father, without adopting some of its customs. The trouble with this bishop, and forgive me saying so, is that he's fresh out from England. They don't understand it here. They look for things that aren't there. And when you laugh, they think it's a threat. And when you joke, they think it's a curse. They don't know when we're joking, and they don't know when we're serious either. The bishop is shortly to stay at the priory at Kells. He will be coming here first. Oh, sure, we know that. We are all going to the party at the castle. Lord Hugh has invited you. Oh, why not? We usually go to these things. The bishop will shortly be attended by the Lord Justice from Dublin. There is no doubt in my mind that they mean to take you. Who has laid this so-called evidence against me? I'm sorry, I don't know. And even if I knew, I couldn't say. Now, listen, Father. If a charge is made against me, I want to see the witnesses in court. I want to see them stand up and give chapter and verse. I'm sorry, but in matters like this, it is not necessary for persons to give evidence. The charges themselves are enough. Father Glynn, are you saying that my mother is a witch? Yes, my son. It is true. It is said she is a witch. <sighs> but it is not my doing or my wish. I have no part in this on either side. Oh, that's only natural, father. When the sparks do fly, a neighbour's thatch can burn. Yes. I had best be going. It was good of you to tell us. Now, understand. You have heard nothing from me. Nothing. I must go. Safe home, father. There is one thing more. A witch does not work alone. You must know that all of you are involved. I will make my own way. <sighs> well, Petta, what's to be done? There's only one way. We shall have to get out. No. If we make a run for it, the accusation sticks. They'd hunt us down like rats. We'd never stand a chance. But there's no way we can win. There's too many of them ready to believe it all. She's right. These counting books make plenty of enemies. But we have our friends. Well, Lord Hugh is no enemy, and the Lepores will stand by us. We could muster enough support to have the bishop thrown out. But this may not be just to kill Kenny, Brew. With the Lord Justice coming, I don't like the smell of it. Ah, Lord Hugh will see to it. He's always been a good friend. He won't be so friendly when he's threatened with excommunication and the forfeiture of his land. Couldn't come to that. We need to take the papal bull by the horns. How? We get our friends together and we'll ride out ah, to the priory. No, we'd be walking right into it. We have to face this madman out. He has to know I'm not some crazy woman off the bogs. We have to see him out in the morning light. Right, Mother. It takes a woman to beat the devil. <laughs> but it's a mite more difficult when the devil's wearing a mitre. Oh, God, those bloody people. Muttering on in the dark about how I killed me three husbands. And never a one of them dared to bring a charge. And now this. Witchcraft and black dogs. Oh, Jesus. In the morning. We'll leave old John here to mind the shop. William will bring some of his strong young friends and we'll go to see this bishop. Oh, God, I, and I'll see to it that they're tidy with their faces washed. <laughs> we'll make a show of force, all right. But we can't. I'm not the sort to be trodden under, Petter. I'd take this to the king in England if I have to. There's more money owed to me than the whole of Ireland. Now, we'll all get ourselves a good night's sleep and in the morning we'll mix that bishop a little potion. We'll take John's wart and a bunch of self-help and we'll mix them into a little powder and sprinkle it all around his feet. God, Alice, that's the most terrible curse. No decent woman should know about it. I'd be a fool if I didn't, and I'd be the greater fool if I believed it. Oh, I'm just joking, girl. Who the hell does this silly little man think he is? He's no more than a speck of dust to be swept to the grate. Away, you. And William, see the door is bolted. 
I want no black dogs pushed in at the door, no livers of ravens, no beaks of the wren or bones of toads. I'll plant no evidence here. No bishop straight from his consecration is going to put Alice Kittler to the stake. So, so you actually like it here, my lord? I don't know what to say to that, Bishop. Uh, it's where I live. Yes, but you are not Irish. Irish? My family has lived here for four generations. My blood is not Irish, true, but I speak the tongue, and what I eat and drink of this land is a part of me. <laughs> no, I am not one of them. I am a part. But you are at home in it, I see that. You don't feel it and see it as I do from the outside. Well, heavens no. Why should I? I bet I'd scarcely notice some of the things you find remarkable. Yes. They always tell me what they think I want to know. <laughs> they never give a straight answer. Well, that's easy enough. For who in their senses would ever give a ruler a straight answer? Then how do you manage? I never ask a straight question. The truth is not found by looking an Irishman in the eye. It is found by appearing to consider a mutually distant object, a hill or the sun in a lake or a tussock of grass in the next field. I find that very devious. Oh, I wouldn't call it that. It is a code, a reflection of a manner of thought which doesn't merely consider what is here and what is now. It takes account of all that has happened and what is continual and changing. The dead leaves of last year, the bones of men, the standing stones upon the hill. Yes. Oh, yes. The silent and malevolent guardians of places of evil. Do you not often feel that you are watched? Watched? I think I am watched. And I turn my head and my servants smile and they say it is only the wind in the ash trees. And I look and it is true there are only the trees... But there is something else, my Lord Dispenser, something that wishes to destroy me. Well, I, I should have thought that a bishop was amply protected. No. No, that is too complacent. There are devils in this land which must be cast out. And their hiding places must be destroyed. There is only the one true faith. All else is heresy. You have all been too tolerant here. You have condoned all kinds of deviant, mystic rubbish. Oh, most of it doesn't do any harm. If it makes for better men, who's to worry? Oh, that's just it. For you are corrupted by it, too. Oh, please. I was only contributing to the debate. Anyway, I didn't come here to talk about the wind and the ash trees. Now, I have no wish to try and teach you your business, but as you would readily admit, I have lived here longer than you have. And it distressed me to hear that some kind of charge is being trumped up against Alice Kittler. That witch? You have come here to support her cause. She is a child of the devil, my lord. Really? I must tell you that what you have heard is entirely without foundation. She has her enemies. A moneylender is never popular. And besides, there are some who envy her her, uh, <laughs> her marital escapades. She is an attractive woman... But so far as I am aware, that does not make her a child of the devil. I see. So you are also caught in her spell. Oh, please. I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. When I caught word of this charge, I came not to serve her, but to serve you. It is absurd and will do the church nothing but harm. There is no way in which this woman can be proved a witch. You must let me judge what may harm the church and whether the charge is proved. Bishop, I am a practical man. We need people like her. They serve a useful purpose. If you wish her removed, why not charge her with usury? She is part of a conspiracy. She has connections in England who are already under suspicion. They threaten the very fabric of the church. Here in Ireland, you have been lax and allowed false and pagan doctrines to contaminate the faith. I have come here to purify and establish orthodoxy. I intend to strike the fear of repentance into every heart in this diocese. Well, you won't have to hunt her down, I can tell you that. She is coming here to face it out. God be thanked. 
fact that the evil is so easily delivered. All this talk of evil needs some proof. Oh, don't worry. I have it. But from who? Who has made the charges? I cannot say. The lives of our informants must be protected. For a certainty. And what about the lives of innocent people who are falsely accused? No one is innocent, my lord. We are all born as sinners. Are you sure of that? I mean, I'm no theologian, but I always thought that we were born that way and that baptism rather took care of all that. Has it been changed? Nothing has changed. Good and evil are the same. Do you not feel constantly the intimations of evil? Does not the wind speak of it? And all the silences contain it. Hmm. Look, it isn't really my business, but uh, the journey must have been a terrible strain. I would have thought you could do with a rest before you get involved in all this. Rest? At a time like this, I have a mission, my lord. What's that? What's going on? At a guess, I would say the lady has arrived. Where are you going? You, you can't leave me now. I have no wish to be the umpire in this tournament. Ah, he's here, mother. Good morning, my lord. Good morning, your grace. My mother wishes to speak with you. Get these people out of here. Who has dared let them in? Bishop, the world is dying to know what I am guilty of. You have no right to come like this. You have not been called to account. You must leave. A bishop... Since they are here, would it not be better to hear them out? We have come here freely, Your Grace. We have no doubt of our innocence, otherwise we would not stand here now. This lady here is my good friend Petronilla de Meath, and that is my son, William Outlaw. And these others? Good friends and God-fearing citizens who can speak to my good name, people who don't trade in idle gossip. It is said, Your Grace, that you intend to lay the most terrible charges against us. I am not going to listen to this. Go get some guards, my lord, and have them removed. Oh, surely, now, it would be better to hear them out. They have saved you a journey. We save him more than that. We save him making a fool of himself. I can see it were better I were not here. Oh, no, please, Lord Hugh, you must stay. There is no doubt of their crime. That is a lie. We have done nothing. You see, I could do no good. Have it out between you, and I wish you well of it. Good day to you, Alice. Uh, good day, Lord Hugh. Good day, Bishop. You must come and stay with us and kill Kenny. Good day, good day my lord. Uh, Your Grace... Will you stop hiding behind your book and your beads and say what you have against me? I have nothing to say to the agents of the devil. Oh, he can't mean it. You will hear the charges in due course. Why not tell us now? It is not for me to have discourse with the likes of you. The world will soon enough know how you have denied the faith. What? How you have made spells and incantations. Oh, ridiculous. How men have sickened and died at your hands. Oh, no, not that one. You have consorted with evil spirits and with phantoms in deadly shape. You have corrupted the young. Oh, that's enough. No, William, no. No, let me speak to him. Is it just my mother you're talking to, or is it the whole of us? Because I'll tell you this, Bishop. I cannot even imagine the things you're saying, let alone do them or be a part of them. The man that could think all that up would have to be sick. He's right, Your Reverence. He must be the devil himself. I am not staying any longer. I see. So you're only going to listen to the one side. Your mind's made up. Get out of my way. No! You stay right there. You sit yourself down. Oh, Alice, don't lay a hand at him. Oh, I have not got the slightest wish. Now you stay good and quiet and no harm will come to you. But we can't hold him against his will. Hold him? Oh, Petter, you're a terrible woman for giving me ideas. Why don't we just lock him up in here till he's cooled down and come to his senses? <laughs> Holy Mary, we can't go around locking up bishops. Oh, he needs some rest, some time to recuperate. He's a danger to us, and he's a danger to himself. The poor creature can't be right in the head. You lay one hand on me, and you will regret it for the rest of your short life and in the damnation that will follow. Mother, I think we should go easy. No, listen. If we tell them here that he's gone into retreat, that he doesn't want disturbing, we can easily leave someone here to look after him. What about the prior? Ah, no trouble there. Didn't he want to be the bishop? You will make your case worse than it is already. If there ever is one, get him out of here. I really, is 
Alice, how are we going Don't to keep trouble? It. These here can take it in turns, and we'll send out more from the town. William here will find him a nice little cell where he won't come to any harm. Now, come on, move him! Come on, oh, 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 He's not going to budge, man. Well, carry him, chair and all. Put me down! Oh, God, Alice. Did you see the hate in him? A grey kind of death in his eyes. To the one thing they can't take over there is the loss of their dignity. I'll get him to lose more than that. I'll get him out. They've sent us a maniac. Oh, so you're appointing bishops now? Well, why not? I tell you this, if it weren't for Alice Kittler, there'd be a good few still sleeping in the hedge. Witches, indeed. I'll give him witches. Well, not being a witch is one thing, but locking up a bishop is surely another. Don't worry. I know my way around. Lord Hugh will soon settle this. I am very sorry, John, but nobody can expect to lock up a bishop and get away with him. But you surely... He was could... 17 days in that cell. I'm in trouble myself. The bishop wants to know why I did nothing about it. I'm afraid you're wasting your time, old friend. Can you not appeal to the king? No, there's not a chance. It's a matter of their politics over there. I'm only slowly getting the hang of it. It goes back to the death of Beckett. Beckett? But that's years ago. Ah, oh, yes, it's taken time. When he was murdered, the power of the church that he fought for was victorious. The church is now supreme in England. And so they seek to bring us into line. But what has all that to do with my wife? She is scarcely a heretic theologian. She thinks for herself, John. She certainly does that, and most of the time at the top of her voice. Just so, at the top of her voice. Her opinions are known, and she is not afraid. So, it's very simple, really. They need to make an example, and there's very little I can do about that. But you are the power here. No, not at the end of the day. Oh, I'm called Lord and Master of Kilkenny, and my power is thought absolute, but somebody only has to whisper in the right ear in England, and I am crushed like a little fly. Oh, then I see I've been wasting my time. No, John, you must trust me. When it is all over, I will try and uh, pick up the pieces. But now, you must forgive me. I have uh, just here... My Lord Darcy. Oh, good heavens. He is equipped with warrants and writs which must have been prepared before the bishop left Dublin. Which is why I am uh, more cautious than I might have been a week ago. Well, I'd best get her by the back way then. Oh, this leg of mine. Let me help. There. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's terrible when winter lasts you all the year. She tries to treat it, but I fear there's no cure. Treat it? How does she treat it? Oh, sometimes she rubs it with a bundle of tow and flax that's been heated in the fire. Oh, and then she mumbles some rubbish about doing it in the name of a rough man and a mild woman and the Lamb of God. I suppose it helps. You wouldn't call that an incantation, would you? Oh, Lord save us, no. Oh, well, when justice enters, the truth must leave by the back door. Surely if that Lord Darcy has any justice in him, he should believe an honest man like you. They go by the book, my friend. When the law gets busy, it's no good pleading honesty or innocence. Can you find your way, Isaac? Ah, uh, yes, I'm not a stranger. Oh, and thanks, by the way, for having this talk. Not at all. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. You're busy, Hugh. Only some matters of the estate. Ah, it's a lovely place. I'm glad you like it. Yes. More like some parts of England, really. I suppose it's the soil. Oh, I must say it's a relief to get out of Dublin. One feels so trapped in that place. The air is so leaden, so grey. But here it is bright. You have some damn fine buildings. Yes, we are proud of them. They are a proof of our diligence. Yes, no doubt proof of your diligence in withholding taxes to the king and church, eh? If Dublin or the king were to take more, we should not protect the land from the Irish chiefs. The chiefs, yes. 
I gather you are on curiously friendly terms with them. We have mutual interests. We all have to live. Isn't that rather a dangerous concept? If we are to rule this country, there cannot be talk of mutual interests. The Irish chiefs regard me as an equal. They accept that we rule this part of the country in the king's name. Mm. Well, that's scarcely enough. They must learn to accept our law and our good government. You know, you remind me of the kind of man who thinks you can kill the rushes just by cutting them once. But the roots live and the seeds stay alive in the ground for 20 years. No court of law can change a way of life. You cannot rule by edict. <laughs> you sound like one of those who have lived here too long. I live with the facts, my Lord Darcy. I cannot afford too much theory. Hmm, and seemingly not much vigilance either. How is it that you didn't know anything about this woman? I've told you, there was nothing to know. She is a moneylender. If she had been charged with usury, that would make sense. But all this talk of witchcraft is really mad. I have never heard a whisper of it. Well, you're going to hear more than a whisper of it now. My lord. Oh, uh, good morning, Bishop. I trust you slept well. The night is never easy for me. Good morning, my lord. Good morning. I shall not sleep well until their bodies have been burned to an ash. Are you ready to proceed, my lord Darcy? Yes. Uh, we, we have these statements, of course... And I presume we can call a witness or two. They must be protected. It may not be safe to reveal their identity. Oh, well, then it would help if we could obtain a confession. I don't see that being easy. You have not met this lady, my lord. Well, I have met her, as I know to my cost. And for all her babble, I do not think we need to worry. You really think that? It is not all that difficult to persuade the apparently innocent to confess to the dark evils which lurk within them. Such people are often quite unaware of the heresies they have nurtured. The simple-minded, yes. But you can't expect that from people who know their minds who are not fools. When I have finished with them, my Lord Hewler Dispenser, they will neither know nor not know their own minds. It is comforting to know that their ordeal will shortly begin. Oh? Yes, they are under arrest already. I am not very fond of torture, Your Grace. Oh, you have no need to worry on that score. No harm is done to the body. It is only the soul which is altered and purified. It is a most effective regime. It requires some measure of discipline on the part of the jailer, and I have brought my own man. He is very efficient. He can make a man who has fought the Turks whimper like a whining boy. Confessions of his trade. But what they then say will not be true. It will be forced and false. But we know what is true, my lord. We determine what the truth is. Now I must go and set it all in order. Uh, if you need any help... These things are best left to people who understand. Is this right? Is this just? I know nothing of these methods. They are not my concern. Of course, we already have the witnesses and their evidence. But a confession, a confession would certainly help. No matter how arranged. Arranged? <laughs> oh, that's a nasty word. We have come here to tie a knot. I hope, my lord, you will not leave your finger on it when we come to tie the bow. So they are already condemned. They haven't a hope in hell. That is not for me to say. No, don't leave me. I would like to ask Please. you something. Please. You have some matters of estate to deal with, and I need to go over all this evidence. There's no way out, is there? Now, look. Oh, don't bother. No other way out. If His Grace wants me, I shall be in my quarters. The devil is on either side. Within, without, he creeps about. But which of these is more the witch? I fear I have some honest doubt. Holy Mary. Oh, I never thought it would come to this. Hey, Alice. Are you asleep or something? No. I'm thinking. Well... I'm thinking too, and I'm thinking out loud, because if I don't, this damned black bag around me head will crush me mind entirely. Now listen, Petta. You're the kind of baby blackbird that doesn't stand still when the cat's about. 
They'll take you easy if your mouth gets slack. In no time at all, they'll be having you say the first thing that comes into your head. That I won't. I can tell you this. I've no intention of telling them a thing. Well, you just be careful. <laughs> With me legs apart like this, it might be difficult to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's a terrible way to stand. There's only an inch or two for the chains either way. Oh, well, at least it's a clean cell. You could be standing here against this wall with the rats and all the beetles and all the bloody spiders running up our legs. Please don't. Oh, God. What are we going to do? Keep our heads, girl. Alice, what kind of a game are they at? What have they done this for? To break us down. Just you remember that. Well, I'm not going to tell them anything. Anything. Great. You keep it that way. If one of us gives in, the others go too. What do you think happened to William? Oh, they'll have done the same. Oh, the poor boy. No, he'll be all right. I told him, keep hold of your mind. Keep thinking. As if you were writing the story of your life. It's the only thing you've got that's totally your own. Oh, that's fine for you. You have all those husbands to think about. Oh, you didn't do so badly. To my certain knowledge, you had your fair share. What? All these years without him? A few one-night stands. A few furtive weekends of glory's all I had. Against that, you've had your lifetime of it, and most of it legal. Oh, they were a great deal of the time sick. And when they weren't sick, they were dying. Oh, I tell you this. The merriest widows are the ones that don't marry again. Then why did you do it? There had to be a man in the house. You can't keep that kind of money without there's a man. Oh, it's sad, really. I've come all this way to William being old enough. And I've still got old John. He was never a patch on William's father. Oh, jeez, when I think of him, I could work myself up on this bloody wall. Oh, stop. <laughs> Will you watch your mouth? They could be hiding away somewhere, writing all this down. That's no harm done. We're not charged with having lecherous thoughts. But it's what they think of us that matters. A good woman shouldn't think like that. Ah, you're getting close to it now. That's what they have me for for being a woman in the wrong trade. Now, I could have been an old whore, and they wouldn't have touched me. <laughs> well, at least not like this. No! I tell you, no! Oh, my God, whatever was that? William. That shall be William. Oh, that bloody jailer. You tell me why any man could put his hand to such a dirty job. Oh, God only knows. Maybe he needed the money. The money? There's no way a man could be paid for what he does. I'd pay a hangman first. Now oh, then, me beauty, straighten up. Put on your best fun. Get the hell out of it. Show disrespect, eh? Ah, that won't do. Ah, yeah. Leave her alone. Now, you be careful, me darling. I have a nice old rod here that could split you in half. Now, both of you behave yourselves. You have a visitor. I'm afraid they're not ready yet, your grace. It takes time, you see. The human frame can stand more than most people think. They still know who they are, you see. Is it wise to talk like that in front of them? Oh, yes, sir. It sometimes helps quite a lot. You let them know what's going to happen to them. Why, there's some that's so suggestible they give up after only half a day of it. I wish to speak to them. Take off their hoods and their shackles. Oh, that's not very advisable, sir. It, it could set back the uh, treatment, you see. Well, I can't talk to their backs. Take the kid and the woman first. Uh, just as you say, my lord. It doesn't help, though. We usually find that if they get arrested, only two puns them up. Now, oh, get up. Oh, oh, you oh. seem to be doing better than you thought. Oh. She'd better sit. Uh, very oh. well, son. She'll get rested, mind. Our legs have nearly gone. Yes. Oh. Now then, Kittler. It is time to talk. You will not get away with this, you know. I have more powerful friends than you imagine. I am glad to hear it. It would help us if you give us their names. It is you, not them, that should be in here. 
What you are doing in the name of justice is worse than any witchcraft. You are to confess your crimes and your sins. If I thought there was anything worth confessing, I would have done so by now. That is pride and arrogance. Who are you to decide what is sinful? You are nothing but a heretic, woman. Nobody ever called me a heretic before. What has been said or not said in the past does not alter your condition now. What may have been permitted or condoned in the past does not alter your crime. Oh, so the rules have been changed. Why was I not advised? Why have I been given no chance to conform to these new rules of yours? Why bring these ridiculous charges? You know what you have done. The evidence is on every hand. There are witnesses. All right, Bishop. Tell me who these beautiful, God-fearing people are. We'll soon see what motives they have in libeling me. Lazy, sneaking cowards who envy me my power and my wealth. Folk with bad debts that want to see me settled. It's no good, Alice. He's not going to listen to that. Oh, you'll be talking about being reasonable and giving in and telling him what he wants next. Well, I'll none of it. Get her out of here. Get the kid and the woman out. Um, but, sir, the other cells are not as dark. I don't care. Just get her out. I have had enough of her devil's talk. Oh, but it's only you that sees the devil. You that worship such a cold purity that you can only see the dark. It's you that imagines all these black dogs and witches that float around on broomsticks like mad rooks in the dust. Get rid of her! The truth, Petter! Remember the truth! Take her out! Oh, come take on, your hand on me, you little worm! To think that I have wind and dug in this house! The whole thing's a bloody outrage! I am sorry that you have had to be involved in all this. Let me undo this. Oh, my arms. Oh, they're... Come. Oh. Sit you down. Oh, thank you, Your Grace. Oh, go be back. Good. That's better. Now then, my child, perhaps you will find it easier to talk. No, I'm sorry. But there's nothing I can say. She said it all. It is less with you a question of confession and more a matter of confirming what we know. How can I? I know nothing. I am innocent, Your Grace. Let us look at this matter calmly. Let us consider the options which face you. The charges have been laid and the case has been made out. Your part is only that of an accomplice. No, I swear I have done nothing wrong. I swear by Almighty God I've done nothing wrong. It is not for you to decide, my child, whether you have done wrong. The court will decide. And I must tell you that as things stand, you will have no option. And the court will find you guilty. That's impossible. That is the way of it. The court will decree the only punishment it can. You will be burned alive. Your skin will blister in the flames and your body burst apart. And your breasts shrivel and the fat of your loins crackle like a sow on a spit. And your fine hair will go up like a torch. All the hairs on your body. The small secret hairs, they will shrivel and go black. And the blood and all the juices of your body will be nothing but smoke and ashes. No, no, that cannot be. It's never been done here. Nobody has ever burned in Ireland. 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 Oh, God, Ireland. You all think there is some... Holy rule which keeps you apart. Which makes you different from the rest of Christendom. Let me tell you this, my child, those days are ended. But no place is the same as another. You can't impose on us like this. Listen to me. We, that is to say, Holy Mother Church, shall not suffer any longer the worship of pagan spirits that lurk in the hills. The priests have even fornicated and taken wives and had children. But this has done no harm. No harm, you say. No harm. It has led to anarchy and corruption, to immorality and heresy. But enough of that. You have only one chance to save yourself. I cannot promise anything. But I think that the court would look well on anyone who confirms these charges in any way. You want me to confess? And if I confess, I may go free? Well, not immediately free. Any confession would naturally argue the award of a punishment of some sort. I should betray my friend. Oh, no. I'm not asking that. It will be up to her to say what she likes. 
just as it is up to you. But how can I confess something which I know to be untrue? This confession would be a lie. But it would not be a lie to say that there are practices here which are not in accordance with the teachings of the church. You have yourself admitted as much. But these charges are nothing to do with that. I'll do anything you want. What do you think you're doing? If it is me that you want. Get away from me. You whore. I know what it is you want. It's no good denying it. Stay where you are. Stay there! There's no need to be frightened by your own thoughts. So, uh, good, there you are. Tie this one up. Put back our hood. Bring back the other one when you've done. Let them have food and water. I shall come back later. May God have mercy on you. Confession. He said, a confession. It wasn't a confession he wanted. No, it's nothing to do with me. Oh, isn't it just? You're just here for the job, I suppose. Could you not see what that fella's up to? He's a maniac. Now, listen, you. Shut your mouth and do what they tell you. Jump through the hoop and be sensible. Sensible? What good's that? Uh, you do what they want. It's your only hope of getting out of here alive. But I have to think of her. Listen to me. She's different. She deserves everything that's coming to her. But with you, it's different. You never asked for this. No, I couldn't. Will you stop being so bloody noble and look after yourself for a minute? Who is that standing here but yourself? You that's facing the fires of the eternally damned. You that's strung up here like the skin of a bullock. And for what? Praise of not betraying your friend. Why should you take that up? Why should you get up and dance to her tune? She wouldn't do the same for you. Let me tell you something about this loyalty business, because I've seen it too many times in this game. Oh, it's easy to think of how loyal you'd be in the safety of your own home. Now, we can all have grand thoughts about the heroes we'd be and the martyrs we'd become when we're sitting close to a nice fire. But it's another thing to be wrecked against a wall and to cutting up the timber to burn you alive. So you make what you will of me and how I earn my money at this trade. But take my advice and tell them whatever it is they want to know. Oh, they're fond of saying we only have each other. But at the end of it, there's only ourselves. There's many a one so proud they never get to see what they're giving away. Don't be so proud you give away your life. But that's the kind of luxurious thinking they keep with the lighted rooms and polished dinner tables. Now, just you ponder that. For I'm the one that's seen this out so many times. I'm the man on the other end of your chain. We are ready, Your Grace. Good. Have the witness brought in. Yes, sir. They haven't confessed. We shall soon know. Alice Kittler, the wife of John de Poor, Petronilla de Meath, a widow and her associate, and William Outlaw, the son of Alice Kittler by her first marriage. Oh, William! William! Be quiet! The witness will read the charge. <coughs> Primo, shall you set quad ad optimum? Let's see his face. I want to see the man who tells these lies. Be quiet, witch! My Lord Hugh, how do we know this man has ever seen us before? What proof can you have that he knows anything about us? I cannot He could speak have been brought them. here from Dublin for all we know. We shall be the judge of that. Let the testimony be read. Primo. Silly set quad ad obtinendum intent a person. Stop! Do we have to have this in Latin? It is the common practice. And let us hear it so that all can know what is said. Very well. Translate it then. Well, firstly, concerning their various sacrilegious practices. It's Father Glynn. No, no, it can't be. Quiet there. They rejected faith in Christ and in the church. 
both by the month and by the year. They neither believed what the church believes, nor worshipped the body of Christ in any way, nor entered a church, nor attended mass, nor took consecrated bread or holy water. That is a general charge? Yes. There is no one in the town who would dispute it. They may offer excuses, but they cannot deny it. Have the accused anything to say? Continue. The second charge is that they made sacrifices of living animals to the devil. They tore out the entrails of these animals. They presented them to a person in demon form by the name of Artis Filium, called Robin. What's he talking about? Artis Filium? Robin, the son of art, I think. <laughs> I wish I had his art. You must <laughs> be silent when the charges are read. Go on. Thirdly, they prayed to various devils, seeking their aid and support. Oh, really? Fourthly, in their rituals by night, they flouted the laws and orders of the church, seeking by their acts to excommunicate the bishop. That was a joke! Bearing wax candles in certain ways, namely by the placing of the foot against the flickering flames, so passing the heat of the flames through their bodies, and they ended each one extinguishing the flames and crying, Fie, 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 amen. Terrible! Monstrous. My Lord Justice, can we answer that one right away? Because it's crazy. Now look, where's this flame I'm supposed to have my foot on? I'm holding up a candle and I have the sole of my foot on it. And at the same time, I'm supposed to be shouting, Fie, 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 amen, and putting it out with my foot. <laughs> well, why don't you try it? It's not possible. I'll leave it, Mother. You won't get reason here. That I won't. My lords, that little fella there is describing something that isn't physically possible. Will none of you say anything? Oh, I've been talking to a wall for a week. Carry on with the charges. Ah, you are all mad. Fifthly, concerning the intestines and interiors of the gut which they offered up as sacrifices, there were certain horrible worms and various herbs and relics of the dead. There were the hers taken from the heads of children who had died before being baptized, and all manner of detestable things, like the shriveled testicles of men who had been executed, which were burst apart in fires made of oak logs. And they fermented various powders, unguents, pitches, and also candles which were enriched with the aforementioned ingredients, and which were blessed with certain incantations. And they thus thought to arouse anger and a hatred, with which they would destroy the church and overthrow the body and soul of the faith of Christendom. Dear God, he should get a prize for his imagination. Will you tell me, Lord Hugh, my Lord Justice, any of you that's sitting there, will you tell me how would I have had the time for any of this? Did anyone ever see me at a crossroads taking a beggar off a gibbet and chopping off his private parts? <laughs> In the middle of all my busy work, I'm supposed to be roasting his little round things on a fire of oak. That's oh, enough. yes, nothing but the best, of course. Nothing but oak. <laughs> I challenge you, Lord Hewlett Spencer, to say here and now that you believe a single word of it. The charges are not finished. No, we have heard only five. There are seven in all. Oh, sure, there would have to be seven, for seven is the magic number, and you fellas are all for the magic when it suits your purpose. You will need more than your black art when you hear the next. Read on. The heinous actions of the accused when they arrested His Grace the Bishop of Osby are not disputed. But what occurred following this action and during their imprisonment is that John Lepore, the husband of the chief accused, happened to notice a locked chest in the house. Seizing the keys from one of the accused servants, he opened this chest. On opening this chest, he found a sack. Now this sack contained many of the powders and ointments already referred to. Those things were planted. Order. Indeed they were. Order. You know, please, look, you must hear me. The day they were out at Kells, there was someone broke into the house. But they never took anything, and I couldn't understand it. But I know now what it was. We cannot admit the evidence of this child, a daughter of the accused, a person lucky in herself not to be charged. My lords, do you think a person who was going to be charged with a thing like this would put all the incriminating evidence into a sack and leave it in a chest for any man to find? Read on. Read out the seventh count. The principal accused was in the habit of consorting with and having carnal knowledge of a certain artist filium, otherwise known as Robin, son of artists. Sometimes this person appeared in ordinary form, 
and sometimes in the form of a black and hairy dog. A black and hairy dog? <laughs> sometimes he appeared in the form of a black amour with two companions of great size and height who would likewise carry off in their arms any maidens they encountered. Oh, so it's black amours now. Oh, they're the trouble, are they? Great, big, black, hairy dogs of men that sweep the maidens off their feet. <laughs> Oh, dear God, I wish I had your imagination, Bishop. <laughs> Have you quite done? Done? I don't know where to begin. Very well. How do you plead to these charges? I plead amazement, my lord. No offense to you, but the trouble with anyone coming from Dublin is that they're prepared to believe anything of us people in the country. You must not treat this matter with such levity. Well, how else should I take it? If I plead for mercy... You'll think I'm guilty. And in any case, there's no mercy likely in this quarter. Then you refuse to confess to your crimes. I cannot confess to things I didn't do. Oh, she had me now for making a false account. Well, then I'd argue the toss. But just take your heads into the cool light of day and consider this for a moment. Do I look like the kind of woman that's going to go to bed with a black, hairy dog? <laughs> And what about those great, big, tall, black amours? When did you ever see three such gentlemen trundling down the high street of Kilkenny with a maiden each in their arms? <laughs> the whole thing's preposterous. You have nothing else to say? You do not even wish to repent? Oh, I could repent, my lord. Repent that I've trusted too many. Repent my so-called friends. Repent the years I've lived and loved. <laughs> but as for that rubbish, I'd go to the stake before I admitted a word of it. Let us hear what our accomplices have to say. Oh, sure. Ask them about the hairy dogs and the bursting testicles. Petronella and the Denise, what have you to say? It is true. I didn't often go to Mass. I'm sorry, Alice. I've what are you saying? Speak up. It is true. True that we made the powders and ointments that were spoken of. Order. Order. It's true that we gathered with the candles and at night did practice spells and incantations. Oh, this is not herself speaking. And it's true that we gathered all kinds of herbs and the remains of the dead that we consorted with all manner of persons in the shape and form of the devil. They made her learn this by heart. Quiet. Let her finish. There was a night. The owls did talk. We are listening. Continue. Oh, be careful, Bishop. She'd forget her lines. Oh, no, I cannot forget. There was the scraping of claws and whimpering. And we opened the door and he was standing there. Yes. Oh, God save us. Tall and big and dark. And his clothes were black and so was his face. Robin... He said, Robin, she is out of her mind, my lords. This woman has been tortured and deprived of sleep and the light of day. She's been hypnotized so that her tongue is not her own. We have heard enough from you, Kittler. This woman shows no marks of torture. Have you been ill-treated? Why, no, my lord. Can you tell us more? Yes. Oh, yes. When we had made candles of the grease of men's flesh, we lit a great fire. And this fire that we lit was kindled with a brazen plate as in the days of the old kings. And we walked on the smoke of it in the way of the sun. For who lights a fire in this manner has the greatest power. They can bring good milk to cattle. They can fly in the sky from Cashel to Crochen and away to the fields of Antrim. They can have the arranging of the stars and the ordering of the seasons. They are gifted with the eyes of hawks and all the knowledge of the salmon. And they can lie in the black silken bed of the night of Ireland and listen to the mouths of the dead. And there is then... A great wind which cannot be heard. And all of the dead can be seen 
in the streets of the living. She was a She really is a witch. She is condemned out of her own mouth. I have no hesitation in pronouncing sentence. She must be taken from here and burned. Give her some food and drink. The blood of toads, the worms of dogs, whatever usually takes up fancy. I think we could do with a short recess. We must hear the boy. I was right. It wasn't all malicious tales. They plotted the return of ancient magic. Yes. William Outlaw, you are the son of Alice Kittler. What have you to say? I confess. No. I confess to them all. Oh, my son, what are you saying? Sorry, Mother. I confirm everything that has been said. Ah. You have nothing to add? Only to plead mercy, my lord. Being not of an age, I was not able to prevent these terrible things. He has no idea what he's saying. He's only a child. He is your child, Kittler. Out of the mouth of your own child are you condemned. He is, I understand, more than 21 years of age. We cannot therefore call him a child. You are fully aware of the consequences of your statement. Yes, my lord. Oh, will you? What have they done? Be quiet. And you have made this confession freely and without any coercion? Freely, my lord. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I'm sorry, mother. I have to speak the truth. The truth? God help us. The whole thing has been fixed and rigged, and that's not the William I know. Get her out. If they broke into the house and put those horrible things in the chest, and have driven my mother by. Get her out of here. Alice Kittler, you are condemned by your friend and your son. We are convinced by their testimonies. You are found guilty of witchcraft and soothsaying, of necromancy and of the practice of heresy. Seeking to preserve your freedom to practice these terrible arts, you are unlawfully imprisoned to the Bishop of Ossory. You will be confined until it pleases us to have you burned at the stake. And may the Lord have mercy on your black soul. Have you anything to say? I'll say only this, my lord. We live in times when the bright day is suddenly night, when all the smiles of friends are wreaths, and delicate men, too weak to strike a blow, can poison the very air we breathe. Well, take me out of here, so one of you, before I choke. The hearing is at an end. <laughs> Nobody can doubt me now. Far better than I had hoped. It was strange. Hmm? That woman was in some kind of trance, as if it were not herself that was speaking. It was the devil himself who spoke. Ah, yes. The wind in the ash trees, eh? Oh, God, I'm hungry. I could eat a horse. Steady now, Darcy. We don't eat horses here against the religion, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bishop. Hmm. You're not really going to burn that lad, are you? Of course. He has confessed. Yes. But while he lives, nobody could ever say that his mother was falsely accused. He would be the living proof. All three of them must die. The devils must be cast out. There can be no compromises. Uh, quite so. But from the point of view of administration and the law, the heresy has been defined. The law has been stated, and that is all we need. There's no real need to execute the boy. The burning of those women will be enough. Yes, indeed. And you will enjoy that, won't you, Bishop? How dare you, sir? I have done all this for the church. I will not stay to hear a word more. <laughs> you shouldn't do it, Edith. I'm sorry, I can't help but he takes more delight in this than is natural. Tell me, why do you want to save the boy? When the bishop has had his sport and you have tied up all your documents and nice silk ribbons, I shall be left to pick up the pieces. Heresy is one thing, but the commerce of Kilkenny is another. Would you have all of this stop them making the finest ale in Ireland? Mm. It could come to that if William Outlaw is not allowed to go about his business. I see. I hadn't thought of that. 
You bitch. You bitch. You silly bitch. Oh, no, Alice. You've got it all wrong. Oh, you're a bloody fool. Do you know that? A bloody fool. Now, wait. I did all that on purpose. They wanted a confession, didn't they? They had to clear the book. Oh, sure. I know what you're thinking. While there's me out there frizzling away, they'll be letting you off with a caution. Oh, whatever got into you. All that raving on about the mouths of the dead. What are you talking about? I don't remember that. No, and I shouldn't think you'd want to. That bloody jailer must have stuck something in your porridge. You were boning on there like a child in its sleep. Alice, that jailer told me there was only the one way out, and he was right. Oh, jeez. No, listen. They needed a conviction, and that's all. When Lord Hugh gets to them in private, he'll soon see us right. You little fool. They have the wood piled up. And it's not the 1st of May or the Eve of St. John. And they don't plan to burn an ox out there. It's you and me they'll have tied to the top. Oh, no, Alice. That's just for show. Oh, it'll be a show right enough. You and me in the leading parts. And that bloody fool son of mine to come on as an encore. Well, they'll be needing three fires. The least you can expect is a fire of your own. I tell you this, I have no intention of sharing one with you. Please, Alice, it won't come to that. What? After what you told them. Please, my dear, I did it for the best. One of us had to say it. You didn't have to put in all that raving stuff about lighting fires, though, now did you? Oh, why the hell didn't you listen to me? Tell them nothing, I said. Deny it all. Treat it all as a bad joke. But I couldn't. I mean... Who am I to say they're wrong? Just me, standing there. Oh, just little you. Oh, yes. That's the trouble with all of you. You've all been trained too long to be a carpet for the men to walk upon. You've been trained to doubt your own mind. No. I come clean, Alice. I thought on doing a deal. I thought if I told them what they wanted, they'd let me off. And never mind me. My God, there's men being killed for less than that. It's all for us. There's somebody coming. Excuse me, madam. Oh, it's madam. And excuse me now, is it? Have you not brought me fine clothes to die in? It's your husband, madam. Well, he didn't have to come for a start. Alice. What the hell got into you? Why did you let them mess about in that chest? It was terrible, Alice. I was appalled. Oh, sure. And you never stopped to think the so-called evidence was planted. Don't you remember the day we went to Kells and Basilia told you that someone had been in the house? Now, oh, what's the use? It's done now. If he hadn't let them search, they would have got him too. They'd know the stuff was there and have him for concealing it. <sighs> Anyways, what brought you? I need to know what you want done. You can get us out of here. Oh, Alice. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, things have changed. People who I thought would support us now look the other way. Cowards. No, no, they can't defy the church. I fear there is nothing can be done. So you came to tell me that? No, no. I, I want to know what to do about the business and so on. You just have to carry on, won't you? You'll have to work a little harder. Without the Queen Bee, the drones will have to work. There's a credit due from Noel of Limerick, and there's a payment... Now, wait, now. A payment for some cloth from Wexford. Ah, you know that anyway. Oh, here. Take a kiss from me. And God save you. Oh, I'm sorry, Alice. And you too, Petronella. But there is nothing, nothing I can do. Oh, God, you're right. Will you let him out? Very well. Mind the gate, sir. There never was anything he could do. He wouldn't know one end of these accounts from another. 
There's no doubt he wasn't a patch on any of the others. The others? God save us. Do you think they'd have been any better? They all walked in my shadow. Even William's father? Oh, no, maybe not. He was a man who wasn't afraid of a woman, nor of a man for that matter. Oh, fear is the terrible thing. That's why the two of us are here at all. It's not witches they'll be burning out there. It's women. Women who dare to stand out of line and be themselves. Here's another visitor, my ladies. Oh, what kind of comedy is this to bring him here? It was Lord Hughes' orders. Hello, Mother. Oh, the Joker in the pack, eh? Can you leave us? Do you have to stay? I suppose it won't do no harm, so... Oh, sir, is it now? We eat a hearty breakfast of civilities now. In the ante-room of death, he gives us all a strange respect. You look well on it, William. They're treating me very well. Lord Hugh came to see me. He let Basilia come too. Oh, the poor thing. How is she? Brave. She came in that new dress she'd made herself. They're looking after her very well. Lord Hugh was seeing to that. Well, thank God for that. Do you hear that? I hear nothing but you talking to a man who betrayed his mother. Oh, please. Look, don't you understand? I had to. It's what they told me to do. Lord Hugh told me. He said it was the only way. Ah, and I did the right thing too. Do you see that, Alice? I see nothing but these walls and those iron bars. And they tell me you've both been tricked into making false confessions. No, Alice, no. You'll see, he'll find some way to put off the executions. And that Lord Darcy can't stay here forever. Haven't you just seen John? Did he offer any hope? It'll be up to the Lord of Kilkenny in the end. When the king in England commands, he is the Lord of nothing. But the king will listen when he hears what'll happen here if our business collapses. And sure to God it will if it's left to that bloody old fool, John Lepore. You leave him out of it. Oh, yes. That's what you've always said. Nothing to do with me. I'm only your son. You don't remember any of it the way it was for me. You take my father now. He was hardly cold in the ground, and that Adam LeBlanc was all over you. And there was no place for me except to be kicked and cuffed by him when you weren't looking. Well, he didn't last too long, thank God, and for a while I had some peace and you took some notice of me. But then along comes old Richard de Val, and you'd be giggling together and making jokes. And the moment I came in the room, the laughing would stop and you'd stand apart like monuments. <laughs> and he'd give me money to go away. And you were glad. Well, when he died, I was glad. Do you know that? I was glad. And I thought that maybe then I'd get a chance. But oh no, you had to get yourself entangled all over again. So now you don't care a damn what happens to me? Of course I care. Do you think I want to see you burned? If there's any deal to be made, I'll make it. If it saves my life or her life and yours, then I'll do it so I will. Ah, and when you've made this deal of yours, what kind of a life is it going to be? Ask me that. You got me this life I have, and I mean to use it. And if I have to mortgage it with a lie or two, I'll pay the interest gladly. <laughs> oh, William. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. But please don't. Jaina! Please don't cry. Open the gate, will you? <laughs> Look after yourselves. Both of you. I'll grovel to the Pope himself. I promise. Good luck now. He's a good lad. He'll see to it surely. Somebody'll fix it. Oh, somebody'll fix it, all right. Oh, Alice, that's not your style. You're not cut out to be the holy martyr. Oh, God, I wish it were that easy. Easy? There's nothing easy about being a martyr. Of course it's easy. Martyrs have a lovely time of it, dying for a cause they know to be right. Well, that's us for sure. We know we are right. Do we now? Whether we live or die, 
we are condemned forever. I mean, if I'd ever greased a broomstick and, and flown above the housetops, or if I'd ever had those three great hairy black dogs, at least I could say I was dying for a cause. But no, the only crime you could get me for is that I'm a woman who didn't look after her son too well. But that's for you and me. As far as that world out there is concerned, we no longer exist. What do you mean? We don't exist. We have become creatures of their mad imagination. We're the rubbish pit where all the people's guilt is tipped. We're not women anymore. We're some legend they will tell on winter nights to frighten children. Even if we got out of here alive, the rest of our lives will be lived in the shadows. Either way, we shall not exist. Darcy, Darcy, uh -huh. I've just seen the bishop. Good. We have agreed that if William Outlaw will undertake public penance, admitting all his faults, denying nothing, we can suspend the sentence. I've taken advice, and it seems quite proper that we should do this. That's excellent. But I have just seen the bishop. So you said? Yes, but I think you should see for yourself. I must say, I have to admit I've had my doubts, but really, whatever's the matter? Is he sick? Some would say he is very sick. He is lying over there on the grass beside the tower. Perhaps he needs the rest. It's been a tiring business. He is lying on his face, and his back is ripped open. What? He has been beating himself with a chain. A chain? I've heard them doing it with a whip. Well, I'm not at all versed in this kind of thing, and I find it quite preposterous. Oh, come now. When they burn tomorrow, Darcy, you can head back to Dublin and forget all about us. But I shall be left here with a cleric of unsound mind. It is a form of penitence. <laughs> penitence? Yes. It won't be so regarded here. You may take my own reaction as fairly typical. If it gets out that he indulges in that practice, I can tell you that a good few people will start thinking twice about the prosecution of Alice Kittler and her friend. Mm -hmm. Where did you say? Over there, beside the tar. I'll show you. I realize you may not have come across it here, but it really is quite a common practice. Oh, I see. He is bleeding rather badly. Look at the chain. Your Grace. Your Grace. You. How dare you? You will catch a cold like that. And you've lost much blood. We have sinned. We have all sinned. Look, can I help you? You can't just lie there. I shall lie where I choose. It is the purification. Such pain is necessary. He can't stay there. Well, I can't move him. You must cordon the area off, have no man enter. He's mad. I shall make a report when I get back to Dublin. And in the meantime, two women are going to die largely because of him. I tell you, I have a nasty conscience. He was the appointed instrument. He was acting on prior instructions. Then this charge was a formality and the evidence fake. Two of them confessed. The law is clear on such a point. Then the better a law, the better it is broken. You don't understand. These debts are necessary. They will teach the people of Ireland a lesson. Oh, that's a very grand thought. But if it's only a lesson we're teaching, do we have to burn the two of them? Would not one be enough? The one who has confessed was not the prime target. Yet William confessed, and you have agreed that he can be released. Yeah. Would it not be possible to consider the same terms for Petronilla? Couldn't she also make public penance? Mm. Well, it's late in the day, but it's certainly worth the consideration. You will think of it. I will do what I can. I will go consult my class. And tomorrow only one shall burn. I have said nothing. I shall do what I can. But I haven't much time. God go with you. If he will do it. Oh, God, if he will do it. 
Then I have only one black hen to make fly the coop. to an old custom, the rights of the lord of the manor. Bring him in. No, you're to get up and dress, but quick. Oh, is it dawn? It's not far off. Oh, trust him to wake me from the last sleep I'll have. He's waiting, my lady. Oh, will you stop fussing? Where is he? He's out there, this way. Good morning, Alice. Hardly a good one, Lord Hugh. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You may leave us. Go back to bed. I think you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good morning. You flatter me, Lord Hugh. I didn't expect such last-minute attention. I want you to put on these clothes. Well, I thought what I had on now would burn well enough. <laughs> Whatever is that? The habit of a nun? Oh, my Lord, your pleasures are strangely taken. Pleasure? I take no pleasure in any of this. But then, Hugh, just what is your game? Oh, for God's sake, hurry, woman. Put this on. It's your only chance. I have money, and outside the gates a horseman waits with two horses. You're setting me free. Oh, here, give me that. I'm getting you out. Uh, to be free is another uh, thing. Go to Wexford. Uh, there, uh, take ship to Bristol. Go to those friends of yours in Warwick. But why? I... I've known it all along that the charge was false, and I've come to the conclusion that man is mad. Oh, he's mad right enough. He's a kind of poison that only the very holy bigots can breed. Oh, this is a capacious garment. <laughs> I think they tie a knot in that. Oh, uh, just here, you mean? Yes, that looks right. Oh, well, now, see me, eh? <laughs> Quite becoming. Now, remember, speak. As little as you can. Ah, the vow of silence, eh? Don't joke. From this moment on, Alice Kittler does not exist. Oh, but what about Petronella? I think we have it settled. But she confessed you can't get her out of that. We got William out. Look, it's my fault she's in here at all. It starts with you, yes. For you're the one that stood out. But she didn't have to be there at Kell. She could have stood back if she'd wanted. But she didn't. She was a good friend. Oh, God, I hope to hell you're right. I reckon you're the only one they want to see burnt. Now, please. One more thing. What? A kiss. Oh. <laughs> Shh. All this time, and I never knew. Ah, you're a devil. <laughs> Here. Oh, that was nice. You must come and see me in Warwick. I cannot leave here. Ah, don't be too sure. You've just made a down payment. A declaration of interest. Look, we've got to hurry. <sighs> oh, you know, my pride demands I stay. Here's me. The Grand Witch of all Kilkenny, with all these powers to conjure up the dead and consort with creatures of the night. And there's that pile of wood set up like a stage, and there's me slinking away from it like a black cat in the dark. You know, we all like to think we do a different deal and be the heroes of our age. But when the choice is life or death, the flesh is very strong. I always said I'd go to England and learn to become an old lady. I'd like to say goodbye to Petronella. No, please, there isn't time. But if I go, they'll need to kill her. Leave that to me. Now, swiftly, up by those stairs, you will find the door open into the courtyard. I expected some cry for mercy. Some indication of her guilt. She made no sound at all. Oh, it's as well she said nothing. 
In any case, we uh, we have a deposition. Yes, but I should have liked some sign. Did you expect to see devils rising from the smoke? I would have liked to have seen more indications from the body. The hair was interesting, wasn't it? It shot up in the flames. A godly sight. Godly. Mm. I would still like to know just how the other one escaped. Yes, it's an utter mystery. I've checked with the jailer and he can't understand it at all. That man is not to be trusted. No man of that sort is to be trusted. <laughs> but he was your man, Bishop. He tells me she was there when he locked them up last night and in the morning she was gone. Do you know what I heard? Mm -hmm. They say that out on the road to Kells this morning there was seen a very large black that woman had more than black dogs for friends, my lord. That army is legion, and we shall not give up the fight. Whatever form that woman takes, she must be found. I have sent out parties to hunt the roads and woods. She will not get far. She must be pursued to the end of the earth. And I will see the gut taken out of her and burned before her living eyes. I will do more... Bishop, Bishop, let us for the moment consider our achievements rather than our failures. We have defined the heresy, and a lesson has been taught. We shall underline this with the act of public penance by the boy. Whether that woman lives or dies, it will be his testimony that will be remembered. It is not enough. That woman's ashes do not lie in Kilkenny. But you have got most of what you wanted. But you can never get the whole of anything here. There's always something gets away. That's Ireland for you. Oh, my God, that's Ireland. There is always in this country a concealed turning in the straightest road. Oh, be content. You got the most of it. The most of it. I hate it. Only the most of it. What are you going to be? What are they going to say in the years long after this day? I can hear it now. They'll say that Alice Skittle was a witch. And then they'll say... <sighs> but wait now. She didn't burn, did she? It was only her friend they burned. Oh, they'll say worse than that. They'll say she got off because she wasn't Irish and her friend was. You seem to find that funny. Did I not say that the worst thing here is that you never get the whole of it? Don't you see that it matters? Oh, I see that it matters to you. But then that is part of what might be called a continuing difference of opinion. I'll give you a toast, Bishop, which you would never hear in England. The whole of it is never perfect. For there was never here a tale that didn't have two endings. And never a man who didn't do two right things for the wrong reason. Not you. Wait. And never a woman who didn't say two things at the same time, and both of them right. You want me to drink to that? Why not? Why ever not? For it's not every day we burn a witch, and she only half of the one that got away. <laughs> No, twelve. Yes. William? Yes, what is it? I'm going to bed, love. Now, don't be long. Did you shut the door? Did you bolt it? Of course I did. Look, love, it's all over now. You don't have to worry. Sure, I know. But till there's word of her death, I'll not give up listening for the sound of heavy boots in the street. Oh, they got rid of that bishop, all right. But any day they could change their minds and come tumbling in on us. But, William, we agreed. We'll have to live with it. Sure we have to live with it. They will live with it long after we're dead and gone. Are you coming to bed? I will, so. The town is quiet enough. Hmm. It's certainly not the same without Alice Kittler. Oh, God, didn't she lead them all a dance? In Alice of Kilkenny by Ian Roger, the part of Alice Kittler 
was played by Patricia Leventon, William Outlaw, Brian Murray, Basilia, Engel Grecken, and Petronilla by Valerie Lilly. Father Glynn was played by Louis Ralston. Bishop of Ossory, Jonathan Scott. Hewler Dispenser, Dennis Hawthorne. John Lepore, Harry Webster. Lord Darcy, Kevin Flood. And the jailer, Joe McPartland. The play was directed in Belfast by Robert Cooper. <laughs>